Well, I guess I've got to eat my words on this one. With a brand spanking new studio in striking distance, and with the backing of South Korean publisher Krafton, the Callisto Protocol, announced back in 2019, was hyped to be a true return to survival horror. And what made this even more exciting was the fact that this was going to be headed by legendary status Dead Space co-creator Glenn Schofield. No one was looking forward to the Callisto Protocol more than I. As a survival horror enthusiast of over 26 years now, and one of Dead Space's biggest fans, I was poised to play the latest in dark and demented imaginings from Schofield & Co. And based on Glenn's many previous successes, I actually took him at his word when he said that we'd be getting an original survival horror experience like no other. We were very conscious that the uh, uh, environments would look different. That was very important. I think you're gonna get in there and you're gonna play the game, maybe and think Dead Space, but when you're done, it's a different story, different characters, different universe, different way we tell the story. We go really deep on story. The combat is different, enemies are different. I can't see people going, oh, that's Dead Space 4. <laughs> well, more full eye, because what was said to be the next true quad A survival horror gaming experience that promises to deliver instead feels like an unoriginal, high functioning tech demo with far less tension and scares than you'd actually expect in a supposed survival horror game. One that actually does take most of its ideas from the Dead Space games. And with a rocky startup launch that included multiple poor performance issues and less than expected review scores, my hopes of a shit your pants scary, beefed up survival horror title came crumbling down the more I played the game for myself. Did the looming release of a particular remake influence the decision to unleash the Callisto Protocol early? I'll be revisiting this later on. But despite my initial deflation and having currently completed the game twice over now, I can honestly say the Callisto Protocol is not a total disappointment. It actually does have some very cool aspects going for it. But are these aspects truly enough to outweigh the shortcomings? Just how much does the game take inspiration from Dead Space? And is the Callisto Protocol even a game worth playing? Let's start swinging and find out as I do my best not to give the whole game away here in this mild spoiler review and analysis and give my reasons to why I feel the Callisto Protocol is a broken promise. And you know what guys? I'm bloody annoyed. The Callisto Protocol takes place in the year 2320 and begins on one of Jupiter's moons, Europa. We're introduced to our first character, Danny Nakamura, who's reported to be the leader of a terrorist group organization known as Outer Way. And from the look of things, something very bad has happened here, and it appears that Danny is smack bang in the middle of it. The scene then transitions to the space transport vehicle, the UJC Karen, and its two crew members, Max Barrow and Jacob Lee. The co-pilots make a living transporting an assortment of different cargo between Europa and Callisto, another of Jupiter's moons. This is actually their last job, as Jacob assures Max that the cargo they're carrying will soon set them both up for life. I'm done talking about it. Then what do you want me to say? Oh, well, thank you. Because after this job, we're never gonna have to work another day in our lives. Well, I guess you got it all figured out. I guess so. Come on, man, what is this? Huh? Back and forth, Callisto to Europa, all this additional security. It's a prison moon, Max. They take the security pretty serious. And what about the attacks? Huh? How do you explain that? By the outer way. They've been hitting targets all over the sector for the past six months. Max notices a problem in the cargo hold, prompting Jacob to make an investigation. And before you know it, everything starts going downhill fast. It 
It turns out that Danny and her team had infiltrated the Karen with the intent of stealing Max and Jacob's cargo. However, in this scenario, everybody loses. Everybody. Oh, I didn't you. I didn't you listen. Listen. After crash landing back on Callisto, Jacob and Danny are thrown into Black Iron Prison by antagonist Captain Leon Ferris and his Ed 209-like security units. You now have 15 seconds to comply. It's here in Black Iron Prison that Jacob is implanted with what's known as a core device, a system that displays the subject's vitals on the back of their neck. So far, it's been a bit of a shitty day for our main character. Welcome to Con Air. And unfortunately for Jacob, he soon finds that this very real nightmare is only just beginning. Literally all hell has broken loose in Black Iron Prison. All the inmates seem to be going nuts. People are changing into hideous monstrosities that will eventually be known as the Biophage, which roughly translates as Life Eaters. The whole prison is in utter chaos, and Jacob is about as wise to the situation as a village idiot studying quantum mechanics. And so, you spend the next 8 to 15 hours guiding Jacob through Black Iron Prison and beyond, trying to find a way off Callisto and some answers to the situation in the process. You know they call Callisto the dead moon. Dead. Now I thought this opening was a strong start to the story. We're already introduced to the majority of key characters in the game, with a vague understanding of what personality types and motivations inhabit these people. Our main guy, Jacob, is played by Josh Duhamel, most notably recognised from the Transformer movies. Jacob's past remains shrouded in mystery, and so all you've got to go on for the majority of the game is how he interacts with the other characters and his environments. I'm a pilot, you need me! Fingers that way. Better start walking. Oh, come on! On first impressions, he seems like a regular, decent enough guy, but there's just something about Jacob that makes you want to know more about his purpose within the story itself. And so that intrigue alone was something I found myself wanting to explore as the game went on. Then there's Danny, played by the boys Karen Fukuhara, a mysterious supporting character whose motivations are as of yet unclear. Now I think it's obvious from the start that she's not exactly what she seems to be, but the game does a decent enough job in flipping our expectations and perspective on Danny throughout the story, both through encounters and progressing revelations. Control room's just up ahead. Get ready. Let me see if I got this straight. Uh, you crash here. And then this whole place goes to shit. And then we have one of our antagonists, Leon Ferris, played by Sam Witwer, who's known for roles in Smallville and Battlestar Galactica. I found Leon's role in the Callisto Protocol to be very predictable. He's taken out of the story pretty much from the very beginning, so you just know that he's coming back at some point. And although the character is nothing you haven't necessarily seen before, he does a good job in entertaining you with his dialogue and general involvement within the story, especially later on when he truly comes into his own. <laughs> He's alive. There are zero poor performances in the Callisto Protocol. I was particularly keen actually on our main guy Jacob. Now he may not be brimming with personality and charisma, but that's sort of what I like about him. He's bland enough for us to feel like we're actually in his shoes, but at the same time has just about enough personality and detail that some of his reactions to the shit happening around him, for example, felt real. To the point I'd actually burst out laughing in satisfaction. And then there's the character Elias, our bruv. <laughs> One of Black Iron Prison's more friendlier inmates, shall we say. He sort of acts as the game's heart. I got quite a bit out of Elias in terms of actual emotional engagements. Jacob is his own man, with no ties to speak of, so it was nice to have a character like Elias acting as someone Jacob frequently relies upon, therefore bringing more of a dynamic to Jacob. And Zeke Alton does a great job in bringing more personality into the world of the Callisto Protocol. He's definitely a standout. So I'm gonna have to take you a different way, but I'll be your eyes and ears and I'll guide you along. 
Don't you leave me hanging. I got you. Unless you know I'm part of no, I'm afraid not. However, there are gaps in the storytelling that could have made both the characters and the story more intriguing and fleshed out. The lack of a persistent and established bad guy, for example, can sometimes make the narrative feel a little vacant, a little one-sided if you like. There are definitely Dead Space vibes in the story. One of Callisto's major bad guys is a straight carbon copy of a particular antagonist from Dead Space 1. And while there may be those that appreciate a callback like this, for me, it's just a bit too familiar, to the point where it feels like straight up plagiarism. And the more I progressed throughout the game, the more I felt and realised I actually couldn't really give a shit about the story. Not only is the general plot a tried and tested one, offering little in originality, but the information you obtain about this outbreak is so few and far between that I often found it hard to make head or tail of what I was actually doing within the story. It all picks up by the last third of the game, and to be fair, in some areas it's pulled off pretty darn well, with revelations being made and a couple of twists to boot, but unfortunately, these twists are about as deep as a child's paddling pool. And the game provides what I feel are beyond vague audio logs for you to collect, and they're supposed to fill in the story's gaps as you progress, but they're honestly about as intriguing as an article on how to watch paint dry. How do we get from this? I hope you're happy. I never wanted to come here, but you had to drag us to this shithole. And now look what's happened. My baby girl turned into it. Something! I had a... How could you? How could you leave us alone? Did you hear me? I had to kill my baby girl! To this... <sighs> the power goes out and the door won't open? Typical UJC construction. <sighs> Looks like it's cross-wired. Draws extra power. That's why it needs two fuse boxes. Wait. What the hell was that? While the story of the Callisto Protocol is somewhat a forgettable, predictable copy and pasting of previous narratives, most notably from Dead Space, it's made up for with the performances of the actors, motion capture and animations. And this leads me to discuss what I feel the game does better than anything else it provides. Jesus, look at this shit man. This fucking lighting and everything, man. It looks fucking gorgeous, man. You might not, you probably won't be getting what I'm getting, but I'm telling you, it's really good. What you've been watching is currently running on the PlayStation 5 version with performance mode switched on, allowing for 60 frames per second while still maintaining more than respectable graphical fidelities. I also tried the game with this option off, but I found this to be quite jarring and disorientating, and I hardly noticed any real difference in graphical quality. I recommend playing the Callisto Protocol in performance mode, 100%. I should check out the rest of the ship. Oh, look at that, man. Look at just, just. The game simply looks amazing. This is one of the best looking games I've seen on the PS5, hands down. What would otherwise be a boring trip through the narrow pathways of the UJC Karen? instead became a tantalizing trip thanks to Callisto's very effective use of the Unreal graphics engine. The beads of sweat trickling down the characters' faces or being absolutely covered in blood from your latest battle with the enemies. It's all so goddamn juicy, guys. And aside from the odd graphical error, which admittedly can break the immersion a little bit, the overall use of effective lighting, contrast and colors complement the art direction throughout the whole game game guys. Honestly, there's hardly a dull environment to traverse in the Callisto Protocol. From the aforementioned simple walkways of the Karen to the cold and bleakness of Callisto's natural environments. Character animations and the use of motion capture technology only furthers the experience too. A detail I love in the Callisto Protocol is how Jacob makes a habit of frequently checking behind his back. I've never seen this done so well in a video game before. It's such a nice touch for a game based in science fiction horror, and there are times where Jacob might actually make you paranoid enough to follow suit and look behind the character as well. Look how he's looking back and shit. <laughs> I love little animations like that. Of course.
course, none of this would truly succeed in immersing you into the world of Callisto without the effective use of sound design, something very important in this kind of genre, and it just so happens to be one of the juiciest I've experienced in any game too. And I do encourage you all to use a headset or even a decent soundbar while playing. It'll make all the difference, I promise you. The deep, metallic heaviness of each door that you open in Black Iron Prison, for example, reinforces the fact that you're all alone on this hefty, emotionless, purpose-built giant man cage. Or the simple clunking of your weapons and spacesuit as you walk around the environments, it just adds such an authentic juiciness to your experience. It's the culmination of all these little details which are expertly produced that make you feel like you're as close to the action as possible. Now there are some areas which, due to poor performance issues, can break the immersion a little bit, like this section of the game where the ambience just cuts off completely when walking into the room. What the fuck? But even with these little minor issues, it still stands that the atmosphere in the Callisto Protocol is its biggest strength. You'll have to try hard, really hard, not to be immersed by what's on offer here. This is where shit truly starts to hit the fan, at least for a dead space guy like yours truly. From the moment you start the game all the way up until its climax, Callisto is filled, absolutely filled, with dead space vibes, inspirations, or just plain uninspired rip-offs. Even if taken from the same guy involved with both these titles. The intro takes place in the cockpit of a spaceship, just like in Dead Space 1 with the Kellyan, and the fact that Callisto uses UJC as opposed to USG is even more sus. Jacob is the son of Isaac in the Bible. You collect credits, which you can use in shops to either sell or upgrade your weapons. Yes, credits. Virtually identical cabinets and doors with the names of the rooms above. The classic Isaac Stomp, only now with far less oomph and satisfaction. The control layout, menu and HUD system are pretty much copy and pasted. The grip device is basically telekinesis. There's a focus on death animations, the aforementioned audio logs, the blatant ripoff of certain characters and locations, the overall story, certain set pieces, enemy designs and attack patterns, and much much more. Honestly, I'm just going to come out and say this. If you've never played a Dead Space game before, I think you'll have a fine time in Callisto. But if you have, be prepared to feel like you're playing a lesser Dead Space game. So then, does the Callisto Protocol separate itself from Dead Space at all? Does it offer anything original? Is it actually fun to play? Well, yes, but unfortunately, at the cost of removing most of the tension and scares from the game, and I'll get to that. I am convinced that the best way for you to play the Callisto Protocol is on the PlayStation 5 system. The adaptive triggers and pinpoint vibration is present throughout the whole game and truly makes a difference to the overall experience. A great example of this is when an enemy is crawling through events. Not only can you hear where the enemy is, but you can actually feel it too with pinpoint accuracy. This kind of tech is without a doubt one of Callisto's saving graces, and without it, would probably suffer even more so for it. Combat is largely satisfying, and a bit of a separation from what we're used to seeing in horror games, but that's actually a good thing. Aside from the juicy gunplay, more often than not, you'll be dodging and bashing enemy skulls in with either your crowbar or stun baton. A 
and it can feel incredibly cathartic once you work the enemy attack patterns out, but for the large majority, all you really have to do is just wait for the enemy to approach you, hold down either left or right on your controller to dodge, and simply wait for your opening to attack, before repeating the process all over again. And when this happens throughout the whole game, and on a frequent basis, you can't help but feel like you're mostly in control. Can he still get me? If he's behind me? Fuck it, I have some of that. Where is this guy? Alright, I think I can... Where are you going? And ultimately, this can actually remove so much of the scares and tension from the game. You'll be there battling like two or three enemies, something like that. But you'll be like touching them and you won't even be afraid of touching these guys because you just know how the enemies attack and it's 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 just it's just not scary guys. It's just not a scary game. Now, some people have complained that once the enemies start coming in hordes, the game suddenly becomes too frustrating to bear. Because of how Callisto's combat works, it can often feel like a task and a half to effectively manage your surrounding enemies. But what I think is actually happening here is that the people making these complaints haven't actually effectively used the game's full mechanics to their advantage, and this is something I was guilty of in my first playthrough too. So I've kind of got to stick up for Callisto a little bit here. For example, the grip mechanic, which allows you to grab an object or enemy, is without a doubt the best tool in the game and should be one of the first things you upgrade. This thing can make your time in Callisto far easier, even on the harder difficulties, and should be used whenever you get bombarded by multiple enemies. And something that works against the Callisto's own merits is you already know most of the time when an enemy or horde is due to attack you anyway because of the environmental hazards Callisto gives you to dispatch your enemies. You'll arrive at an area, see some spikes for example, and know instantly that something's going to happen soon. And this in turn can make the game feel a little bit too predictable. <laughs> So a lot of the time while playing through Callisto, you will often find yourself feeling empowered rather than shaking in your little space boots. And for a game that's said to be survival horror, in my experience, it actually feels more action horror than anything else. On my first playthrough, I went through on medium difficulty. What I found was that items were plentiful to the point I would have no choice but to leave multiple items behind me because I was already stocked up to the brim. I went through the game again on hard difficulty and found the game to be far more tense and enjoyable. Not only does Jacob take far more damage from enemies, but the items in hard mode are almost close to none. So it truly forces you to think twice about using your ammo, prodding you to save it for a horde or a boss fight. Speaking of which, and again, without giving away too much here, boss fights in the Callisto Protocol are, for the large part, a little disappointing, a little samey. The final boss was actually the most tense I felt in the entire game during my playthrough in normal difficulty. Callisto truly makes you use most of what you've learned up until this point, and although nothing groundbreaking, I found it to be an enjoyable final fight nonetheless. In terms of actually controlling your character, Jacob feels fluid and responsive, from simply walking around to fighting the eight types of biophage. Getting from one area to another is easy enough because the game is incredibly linear, with even the odd holy handy marker on a wall to tell you where to go, you know, for the casuals. Callisto is very linear as I say, with no puzzles to speak of to tantalize your brain. No, taking a fuse from one area to another does not constitute a puzzle. But with the odd secret and side road to explore for hidden extras, it's not completely linear at least. And I appreciate the following might be due to hiding the odd loading screen as you get from one area to the next, but there's just too much crawling and shimmying in this game. Jimmy, Jimmy, go, 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 Jimmy, Jimmy, Shimmy, shimmy, 
Since its release on December 2nd, the Callisto Protocol has received some much needed performance patches. From simple graphical fixes to a faster animation for swapping weapons and healing. <sighs> But even with an eventual fine-tuned product come February 2023, with a new Game Plus mode and a hardcore difficulty option, it just doesn't change the fact that the Callisto Protocol doesn't take any risks in innovation. It honestly feels like an advanced tech demo to me, with mediocre gameplay, a safe story, and about as much originality as today's current movie scene. There's just nothing new here. And I am convinced guys that the Callisto Protocol was pushed out earlier than it needed to be because of the impending release of Schofield's previous baby being remade and released in late January 2023. It's like they knew their game wasn't up to scratch. Callisto even takes place in 2320, which, slightly rearranged, is 2023. Whatever the case may be, there's no denying Striking Distance have worked their asses off with this game, and you can clearly see the love blood, sweat and tears that have gone into making this game, and on top of that, you can quite clearly see how Glenn's been overworked just by looking at some of his interviews in the lead up to the Callisto's release, and that obviously goes for his team as well. But, you know, I'll freely admit that I don't know jack shit about what's happened here behind the scenes and whatnot, but what I do know is that for me, the Callisto Protocol is a broken promise. Please like this video and subscribe for more content like this and comment down below and give us your take on the Callisto Protocol. Thank you very much for watching as always, especially if you've made it this far into the video. And until the next one guys, I will see you all very soon. I can't see people going, oh that's this baseball.